This is CyberSound, your simplified and fundamentals-focused source for all things cybersecurity, with your hosts, Jason Pufall and Stephen Maresca. Hi, everybody. Welcome to CyberSound. Uh, as always, joined by Steve Maresca and Matt Fasaro. Hey, guys. Nice to be here again. Hi there. And we're fortunate today to be joined by Lisa Grandy, who's a licensed clinical social worker with a practice in Milford, Connecticut. Hey, Lisa. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, so we're entering the holidays, and uh, we've been having some discussions here internally about, you know, how do you sort of take a break? Um, you know, we're especially here, you know, we're in the security industry. It tends to be somewhat of a, you know, incident response season a little bit for us. So, it, you know, that can be challenging. Um, but we've been trying to th- talk through a little bit, you know, how do you actually encourage folks to, to take a legitimate break, to separate from work, um, Maybe with sometimes those commitments or those expectations that there's still a certain amount of mindfulness. And we're, we're trying to figure out that work-life balance to some degree. Um, yeah, Steve, Steve and I are definitely um, no strangers to not keeping that balance. <laughs> <laughs> Intimately familiar. Yeah, we, we are uh, entrepreneurs. We have done startups. We've been working at 4 o'clock in the morning without sleep. The struggle is a real issue, and you know, in the information security industry in general, time zones are irrelevant. Attacks happen at any time of the day, so it's a real consideration that we need to keep in mind that people themselves are a bit of a bottleneck and need to be treated appropriately. Right. And business runs lean, right? I mean, you know, not everybody has excess employees that can just simply roll roll them off, right? So, Lisa, what are your thoughts in terms of you know, sort of business owners' responsibility here, right? Management's responsibility to support this. So I think that um, one of the things that is helpful is trying to establish some of those relationships and boundaries before the the crunch of the holiday season. Um, We're perhaps a little bit too late for this year, but we can certainly make a goal for next year. Um, Because I do think that um, giving the space and allowing for Vacation time and personal time is an important one, um, but that's probably something that needs to happen throughout the year because the holiday season is that much extra stressful. Um, And I I hear what you're saying that, you know, uh, cybersecurity attacks do not take a break on New Year's Eve. Um, So that that's going to be a a day where someone, you know, it's it's hard to take vacation according to the school calendar, which we're all, I think, sometimes familiar <laughs> right. with. Uh, is, I mean, are there any particular tactics you have for employees to actually take that break then? Like, you know, what is a healthy separation? And, and you know, what, do you, what are your thoughts there? So I think that, again, being realistic. So um, if you're someone that takes a day off or takes time off and finds yourself checking your phone and checking your email and and seeing what's going on, I think that it would be important to establish some kind of a boundary to maybe check once in the morning, once in the afternoon, uh, checking you know, uh, once at four in the morning, but hopefully getting your rest, (laughs) um, because it would be unrealistic to say that you're going to take three days off and not check, check in or not check your emails. Um, so making it somewhat realistic is probably a good place to start. Um, and I think as a business owner, understanding that when your employees come in refreshed and having had a break, certainly probably more effective to handle those crises that will undoubtedly pop up when they return back to work. So I I think there's an interesting dynamic here where there's sort of an implicit expectation of the business or the business owner or, you know, the entity at large that employees are always paying attention uh, without respect necessarily to the time of day or that personal boundary. IT in particular has that boundary erode. So what in that context is most beneficial to to help restore a bit of balance, understanding that, frankly, it's out of balance for most people in that field? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that my guess is that you guys work as a team. Um, I would hope that there's a, that there's a a, a level of, um, support that there's a level of people you can rely on. So hopefully you would feel trusting enough that if you're going to take 
time that there is someone else that can help manage things until you return or at least keep you in the loop for when you know there is some kind of an emergency. So, so business yeah. owners might be benefited by, by developing a rotation or, yeah. you know, a schedule that's respectful of people's time and, and vacation slots. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think so in my personal experience, right. I've worked in hospitals for, for many years and hospitals, same thing, never close. Don't take, don't take vacation date or don't, you know, observe holidays. Um, accidents happen, crises happen. So certainly hospitals are hopefully uh, better staffed than perhaps a smaller startup technology, you know, company or business. Um, but it's the same idea, right. That there, that there should be, uh, like a fluid, um, that's what I'm looking for. Like a, you know, a staff rotation of sorts to help manage anything that can pop up at different times so that people do come back again, feeling rested and feeling that they can tackle a, a situation. Yeah. You know, what jumps out at me and it, it's consistent with some of the other conversations we've had is again, you just need some good communication and planning to be able to a accomplish that, right? I think, you know, if, if everybody tries to take vacation uh, on that same week to burn, you know, unused days or whatever it is, you, of course, everybody's going to feel a certain sort of responsibility to not completely abandon the workplace. But if you can schedule that or you plan it, I think people can take legitimate time off. Mm -hmm. The, so... Is it, is it more difficult during the holidays, do you find? Is it, is it because there's more pressure and, and everybody is trying to take that time off in the same, in the same time period? Uh, do you, have, have, has your experience shown you that that's a more stressful period or a more difficult period for people to sort of you know, separate from work or decouple a little bit? I think that the holiday time is probably one of the more stressful times of the year that we have in general, um, because the holidays are, um, you know, not always as fuzzy as uh, commercials and um, TV shows like to make them out to be. So I think that holidays can be stressful. Um, and so that, of course, will spill into your work life. Um, and in regards to taking that time off, I think there is sometimes an expectation, right? That if that if every, everyone's off and everyone's home, that, that you're going to do that too. But you might be in a, an environment where there's not, that's not a possibility. So hopefully communicating with your employees on how to manage that during the holiday season. But this is the time that you'll get, you know, at another time that works well for, for you. Yeah, and I'd say <laughs> there's probably a lot of people that use use work during the holidays to maybe even escape the family. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending yeah, on what yeah, space you're yeah. in with that. But <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, I suspect there is probably a little bit of that. Yeah. You know, we are talking about, um, you know, how to, how to prevent burnout. There's a lot of people who actually get a respite by being at work, right? So I don't think we want this to be purely about how do you escape work? There is a balance and I think people like that balance. Right. Mm -hmm. I think reminding people, employees in general, that it's okay to step away is a really part important part of the conversation. Giving permission. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because th that unspoken sense of duty can sometimes be itself detrimental and make people less effective. And I, I think explicitly conveying that there is an expectation to take a break uh, in order to support the business and the overall well-being of staff, uh, you know, it's a really beneficial type of a engagement with staff. It is. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I think about just just the way that I work. And, you know, a lot of times I'll send emails Saturday and Sunday mornings because it happens to be a quiet time for me, right? So I'll catch up during that. Um, that can really send in a way, the wrong message to folks, which is, well, I expect you to respond, right? If you see this, you know, you should probably respond. And that, that, that's really challenging because on the one hand, what works for me in a way sends a message maybe inappropriately to other folks. And I think you want to make sure you communicate that to people, or at least th there's got to be some, some way to work around that, right? So that everybody feels comfortable working when they can in a manner that works for them, but not setting those wrong expectations. Well, I think boundaries, right? That's the word that comes to mind. And that and we've been in a, you guys have certainly been in this world for a lot longer than um, us people trying to survive the pandemic of working at home and having less boundaries. Um, but 
Exactly. If you send an email to somebody on a Saturday morning and somebody responds because they happen to be paying their bills, you know, right. that morning, the expectation then that you have is that they're going to respond to that message or they're going to respond um, every Saturday morning. Um, but so it's important if you perhaps read that email, um, maybe come back to it Monday morning so that you that the boundary is made clear that this is your weekend and your personal time. Yeah. It, I mean, we, we have a certain person that works with us that has expressed a lot of issues with just his workspace, right? Um, he, he lives in an apartment. His workspace is 10 feet from his couch and it's hard to have that separation of work and your personal life. And so when alerts come in or, you know, maybe an incident's right. happened, anything really, you now feel obligated or it just feels so simple. I could just walk back to the end, other end of the apartment and answer that question real quick but that's probably not the greatest thing to be doing. Right, right. and I, I certainly experienced that too as a parent of two young children. I, I might be sequestered in my house, but their their sounds can be quite piercing at times, <laughs> and, and that separation doesn't really exist. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, it's funny. We have, I feel like we've, we've created this concept of work-life balance to compensate for the fact that we don't really have good work-life balance, right? I mean, if you think about it, it it wasn't that long ago where it was nine to five in the office. And when you left, you probably didn't, you, you probably didn't have a way to contact you, right? I mean, maybe there's a pager, what was that late nineties or early nineties before that there really was a legitimate separation. You know, you were, you were tied up at work for those eight to whatever hours. And then you were home. That, that's just not mm -hmm. the reality anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably where one needs to find a way to implement that for themselves, but also as a business owner, uh, suggest that that culture is okay and is acceptable um, for their, for their environment. Um, all while still getting things done and having people that are available when there are crises and, you know, um, and, you know, people put in extra hours. It's of course, if you're successful, it's probably a big part of how you got there. Right. Um, but it is important to take that time when it's, when it's needed. Um, because most of the time when you feel that you could use it, it's probably a little bit too late, right? right. We, we, you, you, you've yep. gone a little bit too far. So it's important to try to prevent that from happening. Yeah. And, I, and, you know, it is, it's a two-way conversation, right? I, I, I think a little bit to our incident response work and we have conversations all the time saying you need to be able to sleep, right? Yes, there is an emergency, but the fact is you're, you're, you're not valuable if you're exhausted and you need to be able to give people that opportunity to step away. Uh, I think it is a, it's a conversation between, you know, sort of management and staff to make sure that you really understand where sort of where people's headspaces are, how they're feeling, uh, what you might need to do to make sure that you've got a workforce that is, you know, that's sort of happy, that's rested, that feels good about coming to work. Uh, you know, it's a dialogue. It's a part of crisis mm -hmm. management, ultimately. Um, if folks are at their wits end and their minds are afraid, they're not making proper decisions, much less maintaining a proper work-life balance of any kind or reserving time for family. Um, it, crises have a tendency to exacerbate all of these issues, and that's ultimately why it's even more important to stress that uh, it's okay to step away at times. So, right. Lisa, on, on that note, mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you, the, the employee, the individual should be looking out for to identify when they're starting to hit that threshold, right? Starting to not feel so good. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the things, of course, is that our body sends us messages. So any kind of somatic um, complaints, right? So I think we in general know the signs of stress. So headaches, upset stomach, ten muscle tension, right? Those are kind of the small little cues that our body is sending us to say, hey, we're kind of stressed out. Um, and then mood irritability right and we're, we're all somewhere on these continuums all throughout the day the slash the week um you know and, and in, you know with different people employees and family and such um but if you find that your mood is really quite irritable or you're having a hard time um steve as you said managing the, the piercing sounds of your young children <laughs> that perhaps um 
you know, th those are cues that you do need to take a little mini mental health break. And it could be as simple as taking a few deep breaths, or it could be something as taking a day off. Right. So, I mean, there's any, there's a whole bunch of things in the, in the in-between um, that could be helpful. And maybe not even going so far as to not decompress with the same people that you've been working with. Right. Um, a lot of, I, mean, a lot I of want people, to spend all my time with you guys, though. What <laughs> of do you course, mean? of course. But yeah, so some people kind of make, uh, you know, especially in this field, they're the people that they hang out with. It, right. It's all part of their persona, and it really kind of engulfs their life, right? Uh, so, yeah. be, you know, us being in security, if you're around people talking about security all the time, it's part of your job, it's part of your family life. That's that's a lot to be forefront all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. It, well, again, it goes back to finding a finding a balance, and it, you know, it, I think it says a lot that you would want to spend time with the people that you work with. Um, you have, I'm sure, there's a lot in common. You have similar interests. You have things that m it makes sense why you would be friendly um, with those people, and that's it. That's a nice thing. That's a good thing. But sometimes it is good to you know change, you know, switch gears or talk about different topics um, that you might not be able to connect with the people that you work with as much. Yeah. It, it, and it's interesting, you know, part of it too, this time of year is challenging because you get what, eight, 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 nine hours of sunlight. You know, by the time you're actually out of bed, maybe call it 7 a.m. if you're really lucky, uh, you know, it's dark at four. And so you've got that on top of all of this, right? So you've got your holidays, you've got for us, you know, what arguably becomes a slightly busier season typically, and it's hard to peel out anyway, or peel away anyway. And then you've got darkness at four o'clock. So, you know, mm -hmm. times that I normally might walk the dog or otherwise sort of take advantage of that outdoor time, that, that that's important to me. It's not quite as enticing as it is in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and there's, there's a lot to manage around for this. Yeah. And hopefully I, you might be in a situation where you could encourage people to take a, a few moments in the middle of the day to step outside, um, especially to stretch, right? If you're, if you're a, you know, an IT person, probably sitting out a, in front of a computer and in a chair, um, you know, stretching, getting some sunlight, because that's, you know, we are, I think someone had said this once before that we are still biological human beings right. behind the the technology, right? That, that runs all this stuff. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Uh, so, you know, finding a way to get outside is important. And, you know, I think recognize that you, you, you can't make anybody do anything. So everybody has to find really what works for them. And you, know, I think pr granting permission to, to do those things is important, but you can't presume that, you know, what works for you will work for somebody else. So there's probably some generalized useful tips, but no, not for everybody. And, and similarly, if it's something that you as an individual, a staffer that you manage has never actually explored, if they don't have hobbies that they can articulate, it's healthy to go out and seek them to find venues for relaxation. Right, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, not having too many hobbies, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a few of <laughs> We definitely have a few of those. Uh, and so I think as we look to wrap up, Lisa, is there any other, you know, any real parting thoughts you want to give for, for sort of wellness. And I think we, we, we may explore this more, you know, in the future perhaps, but you know, as we're, mm -hmm. as we're heading into the holidays, we're, you know, a few weeks away at this point. Um, you know, I think we've touched on some good things. Anything that really jumps to mind that we haven't covered? Um, I think that, I mean, I think it's always an important conversation and discussion to be having, but again, I, I think that you guys alluded to it earlier, but communication between, um, you know, employer employee or um and allowing that letting that culture be known that it's going to be okay to take some to take some time for yourself and that's what the expectation is um because there are expectations when you are working um you know so being able to take that time um and that but having that relationship with your with your place of business is going to help you in, in the long run for sure Every, every discussion we have, I feel like on this podcast starts with, Hey, there's some pre-planning that needs to occur to make whatever it is that we're talking about effective, right? Whether it be instant response or wellness, right? Everything is give a little thought up front. Your life will be easier down the road. 
Exactly. It just isn't that complicated, I think. Yeah, that's a lot of things I think, you know, you could do. We're, we're sometimes we're really good at, um, you know, setting up the, the the fence at the bottom of the hill, you know, but it, it's uh, it's important to set up the fence at the top of the hill to prevent the rolling down. <laughs> so so that, um, you know, the preventative work is sometimes a little hard, but it, it in the long run, it, it helps you out. Yeah, and, and making it part of your routine, it, like like you said, Lisa. Right. Don't don't pop out of the woodwork, you know, November and suddenly want a relationship yeah. with your employees. It's right, probably not going to go over well. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, Lisa, thanks for joining today. Uh, I mean, it's an important topic. Uh, I think you know, candidly, we probably don't give enough thought internally here on how to actually sort of take that time and and make that balance of time. So I think. You know, maybe this is the beginning of that conversation. Maybe tongue in cheek a bit. We have it right. It's but, one of those growing pains. Right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you know, but we are. We're small, and it is challenging to work through this stuff. And, and you know, we're like a lot of companies in that regard. So I think it's a it, it's a useful and topical uh, thing to discuss in 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 the right time. So uh, I appreciate you joining. I think we'll probably look to do a you know a wellness part two at some point uh, <laughs> as we as we roll into other parts of the season. Um, and you know, as always, if anybody has sort of comments or questions or, or frankly, you know, tips that have worked for you or your company, you know, we're all here. So uh, hit us up on Vancord at LinkedIn or maybe Vancord Security at Twitter, uh, and we can continue the, the conversation there. Uh, we appreciate people joining and hope you got something valuable out of this. Uh, Lisa, thank you and have happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you. Stay vigilant. Stay resilient. This has been Cybersound.